Hey everybody, Mark here again. Hey, so I was watching a, a video that slot cars and HO trains did about independent front ends and we started chatting a little bit in the comments and he asked if I ever did a video on um, comparing, you know, non-independent versus independent and if, if there really was a benefit. So I actually just conducted a little experiment um, and I always felt the independent front end did handle the cars, did handle better. And that does definitely appear to be the case. So the front end that I use, um, well, I use several different independent front ends, but they're all basically the same. They all have a, a little retainer and the hub slides on and spins. I have some from Wizard that are aluminum that I prefer. Um, this is a Viper. This is actually the plastic version of this independent front end that Viper has here. Um, and they range are about seven, eight bucks. That's without tires. So you do have to um, add another couple of bucks for tires. Um, then you press on the other side. And um, I tested with a standard Viper non-independent front end this is a these are both 0 0.350 tires so i did about um i use this viper pretty much stock v-spec car um with this body i tested on the white lane on my track and i did about 15 laps um per car i did this a couple of times let, let me see here so Let's see which one this is. So this was the first test I did with the non-independent front end. And I was able to pull a 2.869 best lap. And I was averaging about 3.1 seconds a lap. This was with the independent front end. I was averaging under 3 seconds a lap and did a 2.80. Then... This is again with the independent front end on the second test, again, 293, so under three seconds. And then I did a little better, 308, but still was not able to get under three seconds with the non-independent front end. Um, also, I noticed the car definitely de-slotted more um, with the with the non-independent front end, in particular, um, this turn here on the white lane and this turn here on the white lane. Um, with the independent front end, it, it, it negotiated those turns much better. I had m m much less D-slots um, in those turns with the independent front end. And I was pushing the car hard. I was trying to see what you know, the best lap times and how the car handled if I really pushed it. And I would definitely say that the independent front end does make a difference. The car just does handle better in turns, um, which makes sense to me because when you think about it, when the cars when the car is coming around the turn, it's a little bit different radius turn for each tire. So to be able to spin independently, um, just makes sense that you, the car would track better with that independent front end. So, um, so yeah, you know whether or not it's worth the extra ten bucks. You know, the the times were not significant, but it definitely. I was averaging more laps under two under three seconds with the independent front end, um, and definitely deslotting less. So. Um, you know, maybe on a few cars that you're going to race with, I think the independent front end is um, definitely a worthwhile investment. But yeah, that's it. Just wanted to share that quick little test that I did on the uh, independent versus non-independent front end. And that's it. We'll talk with you guys soon. Let me know if you have any questions. Hit me up in the comments and take care, everybody.